How's it going everybody? So today I am super excited to teach you how to build a soundproof practice room. If you're in a band and you have always wondered, hey, is it possible that we could practice in here all night long and not disturb our roommates or our neighbors or anybody outside the room? The answer is yes. There are some caveats to that answer, but I'm going to go through all of that in this video and give you a detailed overview of how to build a soundproof practice room for your band. This is something I would have killed for back in the days when I was practicing in my parents' basement growing up and it was super Super loud I don't know how my parents dealt with it and then moving on to playing in bands in my 20s and we used to play out in a garage but we always had to stop early because the neighbors obviously did not want us playing past 10 o'clock at night because they had kids and stuff so if you're interested in learning how to do this I will teach you right before I jump in I want to let you know that I have a free soundproofing course this will go more in depth it'll give you a general overview of soundproofing uh, and you'll learn a lot from that so definitely check that out in the notes below all right without further ado let's jump into the video <laughs> Okay, so soundproofing is based off of three pillars. I, I think it's a very complicated subject, but I've always thought with my teaching that I wanna simplify it and make it easy because at the end of the day, you can do this and it doesn't have to be overly technical. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is mass. Mass means weight, it means heavy stuff on your floor, on your walls, on your door, on your ceiling, your windows. Everything involved with soundproofing is about creating as much mass as possible to stop that sound from coming in your room. The next thing is air. We want to create a completely airtight space. So when I say airtight, I mean literally no little pinhole leaks, the entire room will be sealed up. And because there's no air transfer, that also means there's no sound transfer because sound travels through air. So if we can close up all the air gaps, then we're good to go. The last piece, the third pillar of soundproofing is transmission. So with transmission, I'm talking about sound being transmitted from the outside structure to the inside structure. So to reduce the sound transmission or completely eliminate it, we have some techniques in soundproofing that make it so that sound cannot travel from the outside wall to the inside wall. So we'll go a lot more in detail about that in a second. So I just wanted to go over those three pillars of soundproofing. Again, that is mass, airtight, transmission. All right, keep that in the back of your mind as we go over this build. All right, so let's start with your floor. The floor is a very important part of your soundproofing design. And to be honest, the best floor is going to be a concrete floor. So if you're building in a basement or in a garage that already has a concrete floor, this is gonna be your ideal spot to have a soundproof practice room. You certainly can build a soundproof practice room within your house on like a first story or a second story that doesn't have a concrete floor, but it is more difficult and I'm not gonna go super in detail about how to do that in this video, although I do have other videos, so check into the YouTube backlog about that. All right, so with a concrete floor, we're just gonna make sure that we build it in that garage or the basement and your floor is taken care of. This is the beauty of starting in a place like that. With my own studio, I built it up from the ground up, so I poured my own concrete. It's very costly, not super highly recommended if you already have a basement or a garage, but you know, if you wanna do what I did and you're crazy, you can also pour your own foundation as well. Next, we're gonna talk about your walls. So with a practice room, you're gonna probably have drums and bass, and you're probably really freaking loud. Now, if you're just an acoustic folk band, then I probably don't know why you're looking at this video, but you wouldn't need this type of soundproofing. So I'm assuming that you have a really loud band and you are trying to make sure that this thing is as quiet as possible on the outside. So to achieve that, I highly recommend doing the highest level of soundproofing, which is what I call double walls. So the double wall Walls essentially are you're gonna have your outside wall structure whether that's in your basement or in your garage walls and then you're going to build a second set of walls framing one inch from the outside of that wall so this is creating an air gap so we're gonna frame your walls like you would build any house any structure just normal framing and you're just gonna build it with a one inch perimeter around the inside of your room so those walls are not touching then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take 5 8 inch drywall. This is the heaviest drywall that you can get. It is super massive. It has a lot of weight to it. And you're gonna screw that drywall into your inside wall. 
then you're going to buy this stuff called green glue, which is really funky and it's literally a glue, but what it does is it creates a dampening layer. I'm not going to go into dampening in depth, but basically just know that this helps reduce the transmission of sound through that wall. So remember the three pillars, we have mass, which is accomplished by the heavy drywall. We have transmission, which is accomplished by creating an air gap, a separate wall so that the sound can't travel through the ins the outside wall to the inside wall. And then we're creating that transmission layer with the green glue, which is helping to stop any sound that got through to that point from transferring to the second layer of drywall. So we're creating a drywall green glue sandwich. So we have our first layer of drywall, put some green glue on it, screw in the second layer of drywall on top of that green glue. And now you have two layers of 5 8 inch drywall with green glue in the middle, and that is your double wall system. So this is the best way to do soundproofing, in my opinion, for the walls. This will give you the most amount of soundproofing. Now, when you finish that second layer of drywall, you can go around with acoustic caulk, and acoustic caulk, the floor, the, the corners, and the ceiling joints so that everything is sealed up. Now, let's talk about your door. The door is the weakest point in soundproofing. And what I would highly recommend doing is what I did, which is called the super heavy massive door, which means that we are gonna have a solid core door on the outside. We're gonna then buy eight pounds per square foot of sheet lead and layer that on the back of this solid core door. And then we're gonna put three quarter inch cabinet grade plywood on top of the sheet lead. So remember, this is creating a ton of mass. This is like 300 pound door and you're gonna sandwich all that together hang your door with some heavy-duty hinges and screws into the side of your building and that is how you build the massive door now we want to make sure this door is also you guessed it airtight so to accomplish that we're gonna put weather stripping all the way around the inside of the door and then finish it off with some magnetic weather stripping around the inside of the door so that when you shut that door it seals up like a and it really sucks in the air so literally no air is coming through that door whatsoever so the combination of mass and airtight is crucially important if you don't get it completely airtight you might still hear like little bird sounds and things like that which could be totally annoying so do you definitely want to make sure it's weather stripped up all right so that is the door now we're going to talk about the ceiling so the ceiling is a little bit trickier but not too bad and i would recommend doing what i did in my own home studio which is to do a hat channel system ceiling so a hat channel system ceiling is a little bit different than what we did on the walls you're essentially going to frame your ceiling like you normally would just with roof rafters and instead of drilling your drywall directly to those rafters, we're going to use what are called IB1 clips. They're acoustic isolation clips, and you can check out a link for them below this video. And then we're going to attach 7 8 inch furring channel to those IB1 clips. So what this does is it helps with the transmission. Remember back to the mass airtight and transmission, we don't want sound to transmit from the roof rafters or our ceiling rafters into our soundproof room. So we're gonna decouple those, the drywall, the two layers of drywall that we're about to put on our ceiling from the roof rafters using these hat channels. So the 7 8 inch hat channel just clips into the IB1 clips. It's actually really simple design. And then you can screw the 5 8 inch drywall just like we did on our, our walls into the hat channel system. So we're drilling directly into the hat channel, not into the wood beams. And then you're gonna put green glue on your second layer of 5 8 inch drywall, stick it up there, screw that into the ceiling as well. And then again, acoustic caulk, any perimeter, any place where that drywall is touching the walls, uh, you're gonna use acoustic caulk to seal it up. So now you've got a completely airtight room. We've got two layers of drywall on our walls and our ceiling, everything is decoupled, nothing's touching the outside technically, so we are actually getting it so that there's no transmission, it's airtight, and it has a ton of mass. There's still a couple of things that we need to talk about here. So you will also need to worry about heating and cooling your room. So to heat and cool your room, I would highly recommend putting in a Mr. Cool mini split. And the Mr. Cool mini split is something you can install with a little bit of construction experience by reading the manual, but you do not need to hire an HVAC specialist. 
This is huge because it'll save you a ton of money. So we used a Mr. Cool mini split in my studio and it's worked great. It's super quiet, which is amazing. It even has a silent mode. So it is a great option for a simple design and you can just simply install it on the wall, send it through your double wall system and then out to the compressor on the other side. So that that is a huge option awesome thing for soundproofing because it makes it a lot easier than having to run duct work and all this stuff like that. Lastly, you're going to need to think about ventilation. Ventilation, you might think, comes from that mini split or opening and closing the door, but you're wrong because this is a completely airtight room. Therefore, there is a buildup of CO2, there's a buildup of smells. You want to make sure that there is airflow to and from your room, especially if you're playing in a band, you're going to have five, six people in there at a time. And you want to make sure that there's not this buildup of heat and CO2. Everyone could get kind of sleepy and tired if you have too much CO2. So all that said, the ventilation system is slightly complicated, but I'm just going to give you a quick overview here. So what you're going to use is what's called an ERV or energy recovery ventilation system. And what this does is it sucks in air from the outside, sends it through this little box, which you can see right here. That air is then sent through some tubing that we have and then runs through what are called baffle boxes. The baffle boxes are essentially a soundproof box that has a bunch of 90 degree turns that the air travels through before being shot directly into your soundproof room. And you're going to have a one foot by one foot hole for the air coming in. And you're also going to have a one foot by one foot hole for the air going out. You might say, holy cow, that makes a huge hole. But because of those baffle boxes on the outside, you're extending the soundproofing into your adjacent room. And therefore it doesn't sound, you have no sound coming in. And in my studio, it's honestly more soundproof having the ventilation system in. I had no ventilation before and then added it after the fact. And I think it's definitely great. You don't hear anything. You don't hear the air. So this is a great system for creating ventilation in your studio. Now for the exiting air, the air is going to be sucked out with your ERV and it's going to be pulled through the exact same system in reverse and then sent to the outside. The cool thing about the ERV is that it also heats and cools the air and dehumidifies it so that the air coming into your studio is not hot and sticky or super cold depending on the time of year. So that's really important as well. You have all these people practicing in your room. You definitely don't want them to be like getting all like humid and hot and gross and the gear gets gross. Yeah it could be really bad. So stick to this system and you will have an awesome experience with your soundproof room. Now, that was a lot of information. If you want to go more in depth, definitely check out that soundproof, uh, free soundproofing course that I have below in the description and make sure to like subscribe. If you enjoyed this quick overview of how to build a soundproof practice room, I'm here every Monday, every week, guaranteed to help you build your dream studio. All right. Until next week, I'll see you later. Thank you.